Hello everyone. Uh, it is Sunday, 9.30 p.m. Starting another Twitch stream. Um, yeah, so I finally was able to figure out how to get the attribute set stuff initialized and working, which took me way longer than I was expecting. Um, so yeah, that uh, was a lot of work and I still don't fully understand everything. <laughs> But I did find this amazing sample project that has pretty much every kind of use case of the uh, gameplay ability system. It's got targeting, it's got effects, stuns. So yeah, this this project actually helped me a lot to figure out what's going on. Um, uh, one second. Yeah, so um, where was I? I was shutting off my phone. That's what I was doing. Okay. So the way you set attributes is through a gameplay effect. The action RPG tests or whatever example project, they do it through a curve table, which loads it through basically a data table. This one uses uh, straight overrides. Uh, so if we scroll down and zoom in with magnifier, they override directly using this modifier magnitude. So they just set, they basically hard code the values here. So move speed, uh, and you can see that it's set to modifier op as override, which means it will override the value. But I don't want to do this because I don't know what those values are going to be, and I certainly don't want to make this for every single character. I want it to come from the network because I already have all that information. And if we look at my code, uh, this is coming from the character data. So this information is going to hold all the base health, the attributes of the characters. And I just want to use this one file, load that in, and then take rip out that and set it to the attributes. And I was finally able to do that using the uh, init uh, method of the function of the attribute set which I didn't know even existed because it's automatically generated because yeah macros uh, so if we look at the ability attribute set you can see these attribute accessors or accessors these will create getter setters and apparently in it and I didn't realize in it was created so I don't know how I found it oh I had to fix my uh, IntelliSense the last stream it just crashed or stopped working. I had to rebuild my project and then I got that all the IntelliSense back so I could actually figure out what I was doing, <laughs> which means I'm very heavily reliant on IntelliSense working. But yeah, as you can see, it generates uh, lots of stuff. I don't know if I can look up. Yeah, property, getter, setter, initer. So this is the one I didn't see. But yeah, now that I have that, I can inside of my base character on initialization so when I the spawner will initialize the character and then the ability system component if it's loaded will call first adds the startup gameplay abilities so it's going to load a file which is under abilities GE default attributes so this is my version and actually these should just be zero or one uh, no, zero. No, let's just make it one. This shouldn't really do anything anyways because I'm going to override them with my own data. And I think the other ones are all... Oh, it is zero. Okay, let's just set them to zero. Doesn't matter. Again, I override that. Anyways, so I did have to create this uh, gameplay effect for default attributes and manually add in. It gives you like a drop down of which one you want to choose. And I just had to go through each one of them and set them up. So once that gets loaded into the ability system component, I then set up some change delegates, which are going to handle when the attributes change, it's going to call these methods uh, of this class. So that's all set. And then I set the default attributes, and this is where I was stuck for quite some time over the weekend. The reason I got stuck is in this logging, you'll see that I'm printing out uh, with a format specifier for floats. I had this set to integers. And Unreal, if you try to print a float and you use the wrong specifier, it says zero. 
So for about two hours, I was assuming that none of my stuff was working and it was not initialized when I was just printing out the variable wrong. So be careful using the uh, format specifiers because yeah, floats become zero. Yeah, so now that that works, I then set the UI values. Uh, so I had to map my character widget to these values and that is done in the UI. So our, there's two, we have kind of two character widgets. We have the one when you select a character, then you can see it and you can see the progress bars and the health information. And the other one is the floating character widget, which floats above the character. So this one is the floating character widget, I believe. Yes. So this is just setting the values and they will be called, uh, they will get updated the, the latest values as they take damage or gain energy or do whatever. However, the other widget, the one that's when the character is selected, that one can't really, I mean, I, it will respond to dynamic events, but for the most part, when you click the character, it's going to automatically read all the values again. So as the character is changed, it will read reread from the character that was selected the, the various properties. I will need to, so taking a step back, if you look at the uh, the way that Atlas Reactor did this, they had uh, they had a method for oh uh, man, sorry, my kid was knocking on the door. So, um, what was I talking about? I got messed up. Uh, oh yes, when you moved into a scene, or the round ended, and the character was doing its animation for attacking or being attacked it would switch to that character, run that single animation, then focus on the next character, run that animation. So there was very easy to, in my case, if I uh, duplicate the way that it did that, I can force my character to be selected, update the values as that animation is running and the, the player takes damage or gives damage, and then switch to the next character, which is probably what I'll do. Um, but yeah, that will be to be done at a later date. So yeah, right now I have a little test. Uh, is there anything else I need to cover before I show? I think that's, yeah. Base character, I don't know what changed here, why that needs to be saved. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much how the attributes get initialized. So we should be good. And now I can start doing the effect stuff. So that'll be cool. Right, let's take a quick look and then I'll show something else. So if we open our levels, test map. So this is just a little test map that'll automatically um, spawn characters. But you can see now that it, this is kind of bound and if you select a character, you have, these are actually coming from the attribute system now, which is great because as they change, those should get updated. So we are good to go for that. So yeah. That's pretty much all I've been able to do. Um, not too much else to update you all on. Uh, just as a quick note, I think I'm gonna switch to only doing one stream a week just because I was looking at my YouTube video stats and it's like nobody's watching this stuff. <laughs> so I'll probably just do once a week just as like a dev blog, up vlog update of where I'm at and how things are going. So yeah, expect uh, less of this going forward, I think. But yeah. Not a big deal. So one thing a YouTube commenter did ask about was like how the characters are going to be, um, how the characters are gonna get set up. And is it gonna be exactly like uh, Alice Reactor where you have the frontline supports and what was the third one? Was it just damage? I forget. Anyways, long story short, Alice Reactor just renamed the three usual damage types of damage, tank, and support or class character types. So this is what I've come up with so far. I start, I've already had this obviously. I started to think about the play styles and this I wrote when my computer broke. So each character is gonna have a play style as well as a weakness. So for example, Thra will be dot damage and they're gonna be weak at start but they'll build up over time as they get more energy uh, or as they apply more dots to a character. Uh, Volcube is going to be straight damage, but they're going to be uh, weak at close range. 
isohedron will be, or Ico head on will be a uh, far range, but they're going to be weak at close range as well. Uh, Rombo is going to be stealth damage, uh, whereas attacks are going to be weak when he's not stealth and mostly close range. And the other ones I'm just kind of still thinking about. So if we look at like each individual character, I have split it up into uh, the same type of system where it's going to have your three major abilities that you you use and then an ultimate a dash and I forgot to actually ask, ask eh, ha, bah, add the two preps so there's going to be a prep one and prep two and it'll depend on the character if they have one or two prep which are basically buffs or debuffs or evasions or whatever um, yeah so r I'm not thinking too much about the modifications so you will have like a number of points that you can select so you'll have each character will have like 10 points and depending on the modification you choose it'll use up three points or two points to create a little custom loadout which will make kind of customizing your character a little bit more fun so i definitely plan on doing that but i haven't thought about all those attacks yet because each one is requires quite a bit of thought and planning and whatnot and i also started to think a little bit of the damage per round uh, depending on how many characters you hit so we don't want to have we want this to be a balanced game obviously so I'm thinking about making sure that the damage doesn't get off the rails for certain characters or is too weak for another character uh, so yeah the like Vol cube they're they're gonna have some splash damage beam attacks which is just gonna be a flamethrower because they're volcanic uh, various Various uh, other effects are going to kick off, like dashes to player before they attack, things like that. So yeah, definitely the usual kind of MOBA-ish uh, attacks and abilities. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all we're going to cover for that. I hope that gives you somewhat of an idea of what we're going to do for characters here. Uh, again, I need to think a lot more about this and kind of, yeah, like already I found one character is like our depending on the, the damage per round per characters, it could be like significantly higher. So you really got to offset that with some sort of weakness. Like, yeah, they could do crazy good uh, damage per round, but maybe they die after three hits, you know? So it's all about compromising and balancing, which is fun. Uh, one thing I do want to do once this is all kind of set up, both on the client and then the server, is to throw some AI at this just to like, train some data sets and just have it play like thousands and thousands of rounds and just see what happens i think that'll be a because i want to learn it and it'd be super fun to just chuck this, this type of game at that uh, type of reinforced learning to see what happens so absolutely plan on doing that uh as for the ability system this link is the i'll put this in the youtube comments but that is for this project here so i definitely recommend checking it out it is significantly well written and huge like there's a lot of like it's killing my there's so much stuff it's killing my browser yeah so the ability system is very complex I would say somewhat convoluted uh, it doesn't seem compared to the other UE systems it doesn't seem to be done yet personally but whatever um, it's still it's a it's a complicated subject uh, so I'm not surprised that it's going to be a little bit crazy especially because they have to make it kind of generic to apply to mul multiple situations one other thing that I haven't really got into yet was the game player tags and how that's going to work but yeah I'm sure I'll figure it out as I need to so yeah that is the plan I think now honestly uh, this is going to just be a short update today because um, I really don't have much to show you and I can't really think of what I want to work on right now outside of um, just reading more and playing around with the system. Let me just see if there's anything major. We got our attributes. Um, we got our character data. We have inside of our characters that's initialized. I do still need to set up all the attribute set uh, delegate handlers and what that's going to do. 
and I need to actually start building out the gameplay abilities. So those, if we look at the gas thing, uh, if we look at like the meteor, like one, like a single ability requires all this stuff. First you have to have the effects, you have to have obviously the mesh in this case, textures, you have to have a blueprint, we may or may not need to have a blueprint. You have to have a targeting actor. I don't actually no, I don't know if that's required or not. You could have just a target type. But yeah, then there's this like all the gameplay uh of, I think this is a gameplay ability. So this one, this project is very blueprint heavy, which I'm not too great at using. I mean it's cool and all, but I don't I try not to use blueprints too much. Um but it's it's like well commented, so I should be able to reproduce a lot of this stuff in uh C++. But yeah, each so each ability is going to require like this level of complexity. So it's going to take quite a while. Um, there's cooldown stuff, uh, gameplay effects. It's weird that they kind of split out different. Okay, so one's a cooldown, one's a cost. Like so, a cost would be if in my case, if there's energy that was being used, it would expend, and if there wasn't enough energy, then the cost would obviously outweigh it and then it wouldn't actually kick off the event or the the uh, ability yeah so this stuff is yeah there's a lot to do <laughs> it's not an easy system to work with and that's just one so like fire gun has its own stuff uh, aim down sight there's like a targeting stuff and I'm gonna have to come up with the targeting things as well so that's gonna be a lot of work uh, I need to create the effects for the targeting because it's going to change depending on the area, so the radi the radius or the area of what I'm what the ability does. So yeah, I think uh, I just need to play around with it some more and get a better understanding of how to structure this. And there's also there's like ability tasks and all oh, these. There's just so much stuff to learn. So yeah. Um, I can't really think of anything else to talk about and I don't really feel like coding right now because I'm pretty pretty much in a reading and learning mode at the moment so I think I'm actually just gonna end the stream here it's gonna be a short and sweet one so yeah hopefully next week I can have something to show but for this time not too much so that's it for now until next time